Everybody, welcome to the broadcast. Our media center studio with me is John Elefante, of course, a tremendous uh, songwriter, producer, singer, multi platinum albums with this lead singer of Kansas, and a great new uh, CD of his own that's out right now. And you just heard actually some of that uh, a song about the life issue. And we thought, with everything going on in the Gosnell trial this week, and the president this morning speaking at Planned Parenthood. Uh, it would be good to have John come in here. John, I'm going to go to Jordan in a minute, but set up the, the song a little bit. Give us a little bit of the background, and we'll get into it more in the next segment of the broadcast. But this is you, people heard just a little bit of it. They're going to hear more of it in a little bit. But, uh, but why this song means so much? Well, it's uh, first of all, it's glad to be here. It's generally the, the story of how my daughter came into the world. Um, her birth mother was seconds from aborting her and uh, decided not to and uh, asked them at the place that she was at to use the telephone and she called her mom and told her she was pregnant and her mom said you get out of there immediately and um she's in studio today and i'm really glad she's here folks this is uh, the reason why i'm glad that we have john here and his daughter as well because this is what we're fighting for jordan give us the latest on capitol hill yesterday a big day with a lot of discussion that's right. Uh, members of Congress who for years have been fighting on this issue to expose uh, the truth about the abortion industry, which takes so much of our taxpayer dollars. We're talking half a billion dollars a year uh, from federal tax money and then there's state money as well. And of course, all of the Planned Parenthood lobbyists, the abortion industry here uh, trying to turn this issue and blame the pro-life community. Well, members of Congress had, not, had none of that. And uh, that's why uh, last night there was no President Obama at their gala. Now he did speak at Planned Parenthood uh, at their event today, but he did not go to their celebration of abortion last night. Interesting. The President of the United States speaking at Planned Parenthood while the Gosnell trial's going on. And there's a causal connection between Planned Parenthood and Gosnell. We'll get into that also in this broadcast. We're taking your calls. Your reaction to our president speaking at Planned Parenthood. We're going to let you know when we come back from the break how you can get John Elefante's new album, CD coming, I still call them albums, uh, CD coming out very soon uh, within the next week. We'll get information to that when we come back from the break. But folks, I want you to join right now with 110,000 others that are saying enough of the funding of Planned Parenthood. Let's put an end to it. Go to ACLJ.org, stop the funding, sign that petition, or call us at 1-877-989-2255. That's ACLJ.org, ACLJ.org, or one 1- 877-989-2255. Music today by John Elfante. No, not taking her this time. What's unfolding in a Philadelphia courtroom is horrific. Graphic testimony about the abhorrent procedures performed by abortionist Kermit Gosnell, dismembering children after they are born. But here's the truth. Planned Parenthood has argued in the Florida legislature for the right to do exactly what Gosnell did, kill a child after it is born if the mother and doctor agree. And now we discover the Planned Parenthood knew about Gosnell's horrifying clinic where women died and baby after baby was killed after they were born. They knew and they did nothing, leaving it up to Gosnell's victims to come forward. There's no excuse for this atrocity, and there's no excuse for the fact that Planned Parenthood gets almost half of its budget from the American taxpayer. The ACLJ is battling back, challenging the abortion giant in court and working aggressively on Capitol Hill and in state legislatures to defund them. Add your name by calling 1-877-989-2255 or online, aclj.org. Music uh, today by John Elefante, our guest in studio here, of course, uh, formerly lead singer of Kansas, a great band, and uh, also he's got great solo music, tremendous record producer. John, we're thrilled you're here. Thanks for being with us today. We're going to get into the song in a little bit, but I want to go ahead to Washington. Jordan, the president just spoke. We've got some sound from it. Set it up for us, and then I'm going to play another one when Jordan's done, and we'll get right back into this discussion. That's right. So the president spoke. Uh, he canceled his appearance and, and speech at the Planned Parenthood uh, gala, which was last night here in Washington, D.C. Of course, this gala was a celebration of abortion. 
because of the Gostel trial, I mean, he said it was a, his busy schedule yesterday. He had plenty of time to do everything as the President of the United States hops around, but he didn't want to be seen, I think, celebrating it. So he did instead this more formal speech, which uh, is common for him to do at Planned Parenthood's annual gathering here in Washington, D.C. But, but listen to this. In the midst of Planned Parenthood being connected to Gostel, how are they connected? Well, there are a number of women who are providing testimony uh, on the record, under oath, in, during this trial, saying, you know, I, when I, I told Planned Parenthood, I told the facility uh, about what I saw at this clinic, and they said, well, you should uh, report this to the Department of Health. Planned Parenthood never did. And this guy has connections going back to the 1970s yep. with Planned Parenthood. The original partial birth abortion uh, group of doctors and abortionists, he's part of it right there. So to, to act as if you could separate the two is impossible. In fact, they were kind of covering for him because they would nev- never be the group that took the step to close him down. But take a listen to President Obama and think about the pledge he's making. I mean, this is a, a major pledge to the number one abortion provider in the United States and the number one abortion provider in the world, Bite 3. As long as we've got a fight to make sure women have access to quality, affordable health care, and as long as we've got to fight to protect a woman's right to make her own choices about her own health, I want you to know that you've also got a president who's going to be right there with you, fighting every step of the way. Thank you, Planned Parenthood. God bless you. God bless America. Thank you, Planned Parenthood. God bless you. God bless America. The thought that that would come out of the president of the United States' mouth to me is unbelievable. John, your song that uh, we've been playing portions of, and we will play a, a, a bit more of it in a, in a few minutes, um, is the kind of counter to what Planned Parenthood is, is doing and promoting. Indeed. Talk about what the, the song, we mentioned it very briefly, but I, I'm, I want people to know your heart on this because we want to make this whole issue. The Gosselin trials made it real, but you have personal experience with your own daughter. I mean, uh, your your daughter's here today because her birth mother decided not to do this. Exactly. So, so tell us exactly, give us a little bit of the details of that and then how the song came out to be. Well, um, you know, whenever you write a song like this, you, there has to be a little creative license. I mean, I wasn't there, obviously. Right. But I do know for a fact that her mother had planned on aborting my daughter, Samantha, and decided not to. And um, I'm really glad she decided not to. And uh, it, it's... It's despicable to me how, you know, how she could have possibly gone through with it. She was seconds from doing it. And um, I, I, when I wrote the song, I tried to put myself in that place that day. Yeah. And it was frightening even putting myself in that place. Sure. And I wrote the song very easily. The words just came out. It was one of the easiest songs I've ever written. The song that John just mentioned, uh, his, his daughter is here today because her birth mother decided not to have an abortion. But I want you to listen to the words right now, folks. And this is shocking. So if you got little kids, understand this is this is gruesome. This is from the assistant district attorney in Philadelphia about what Gosnell himself has done and what the testimony is showing. Number seven. There was one baby that when it was born, one of the workers was playing with it for several minutes before the worker did exactly what Dr. Gosnell did, snipped the back of the neck. And when we use the word snip, it is a scissors taking a bony part of a vertebrae and cutting it. This is a very, very painful thing. And some of these babies did not die immediately. And they describe their bodies twitching and lifeless. This is from the assistant district attorney in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, folks. So you're hearing the testimony. So ask yourself this question. The president has the nerve to say in one breath, Planned Parenthood and God bless America. I mean, that in and of itself to me is an outrage. And then as the Gosnell trial's going on and the evidence is coming to light and you hear the testimony from the assistant district attorney of what's going on there, how do you feel about your taxpayer dollars supporting this? I don't feel too good about it. So I want it to stop. So we've got a petition that's up right now and a lot of you are signing on to it. Just go to ACLJ.org. You can sign that petition to stop the funding of Planned Parenthood and you just heard the reason why. And you'll be joining almost 123,000 others or call us at 1-877-989-2255. That's ACLJ.org or 877-989-2255. So we encourage you to do that. John, let me ask you this. In writing a song like this, and putting the issue out there the way you have. Um, the motivation, obviously, you had personal experience. Your daughter's here mm-hmm. today because her mother did not 
make the final decision to go through with the abortion. How big of an issue do you, is this for you as a Christian, the life issue? Well, it's huge in my life because, uh, like you said, I, I witnessed it, and, and um, it, it gets bigger all the time. The more I hear about, you know, things like discussion trial, and, and um, the more I get educated on the whole abortion industry, which is what it is, right? Um, the the harder it is on on on, on me as a person. I mean, um, it's uh, speechless. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's uh, Jordan. Uh, I will say this yesterday. Members of the United States Congress were not speechless. Uh, I'm speechless too. When I when I heard the president say "God bless America" in the same set word, Planned Parenthood, and "God bless you" and "God bless America," God bless Planned Parenthood. I mean, just th- folks. Think about this for a moment. God sure. bless Planned Parenthood. That the President of the United States even made this speech while all this is going on is unbelievable. God bless you, God bless Pan- Par- Planned Parenthood, and God bless America. That right there should be the reason for you to go to ACLJ.org and say, enough of this, I'm not going to tolerate this anymore, or call us at 877-989-2255. That's ACLJ.org or 877-989-2255, and let me implore you to take action. Jordan, go ahead. Well, and, and I, w- I want to say this in the soundbite, the president did think uh, when you were saying, you know, who would say this? God bless Planned Parenthood. God bless you. God bless America. And he hesitated. But I think uh, Congresswoman Diane Black uh, from Tennessee, uh, when when the members of Congress have been taking to the floor uh, the last uh, 24 hours to talk about the, what's happening with Gosnell and the president's initial response. Take a listen to her. I think she summed it up the right way by 27. When asked about Gosnell's crime, our president tells us he has no comment. Where is your outrage, Mr. President? Are you too busy preparing your remarks for tomorrow night's Planned Parenthood fundraising gala? My heart breaks that our country has reached a point by where we are all not outraged by a practice that ends a beating heart and takes the lives of the most vulnerable in our society. May God forgive us. That's the right answer, by the way. The invoking of God's name right there is may God forgive us, not God bless Planned Parenthood. I mean, the fact that, I mean, the fact that he said God bless Planned Parenthood, Jordan, to me, is just unbe- I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, why, first of all, po- forgetting the theological, politically, with the Gosnell trial going on, or is he so beholden and worships at the altar of the abortion industry? As John said, it's an industry. That's what it is. We call it that. Is that what's going on here? It, it is what's going on here. They they own uh, liberal politics in the United States, and and why is why is that clear? This is the first president who is actually in office who will go to Planned Parenthood's event. Now he's they will many of the on the left will they will give uh, praise to Planned Parenthood, but he's actually that ingrained. You know, we go back to the health care law going through uh, Congress when they were writing the exceptions to the HHS mandate, which is still being challenged in court. The, and trying to come up with ways to rest, uh, to give exceptions to religious uh, people and religion like the actual churches. The only non-government individual in the room with the president of the United States, the vice president, the head of HHS, the Planned only Parenthood. non-government person was the president of Planned Parenthood. And by the way, we're 7-0 and in that litigation. We've won seven cases right now to stop that HHS mandate. Folks, the music today is by John Elefante. Go to ACLJ's uh, Facebook or over at my Facebook, and you can link right onto it. You find out how you get this album. And again, folks, let's stop funding Planned Parenthood. The president said, God bless Planned Parenthood. No, do not bless Planned Parenthood. ACLJ.org, that's ACLJ.org, or 877-989-2255. That's 877-989-2255. I'm this time. What's unfolding in a Philadelphia courtroom is horrific. Graphic testimony about the abhorrent procedures performed by abortionist Kermit Gosnell, dismembering children after they are born. But here's the truth. Planned Parenthood has argued in the Florida legislature for the right to do exactly what Gosnell did, kill a child after it is born if the mother and doctor agree. And now we discover the Planned Parenthood knew about Gosnell's horrifying clinic where women died and baby after baby was killed after they were born. They knew and they did nothing, leaving it up to Gosnell's victims to come forward. 
There's no excuse for this atrocity, and there's no excuse for the fact that Planned Parenthood gets almost half of its budget from the American taxpayer. The ACLJ is battling back, challenging the abortion giant in court, and working aggressively on Capitol Hill and in state legislatures to defund them. Add your name by calling 1-877-989-2255 or online, aclj.org. produced a very special video uh, presentation for you that really discusses what's going on with Planned Parenthood. Let's take a look at that. There will always be people, many of goodwill, who do not share my view on the issue of choice. On this fundamental issue, I will not yield and Planned Parenthood will not yield. I feel that the greatest destroyer of peace today is abortion. It is really a war against the child, a direct killing of the innocent child, murder by the mother herself. In 1917, a woman named Margaret Sanger started the Birth Control Review. Over the years, it included such literary gems as birth control to create a race of thoroughbreds. But she cautioned, we do not want word to get out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. But she wasn't just against black people, no, she was a proponent of negative eugenics. She wanted to take all the illiterate, poor, disabled, and mentally handicapped people in the U.S sterilized them and put them on farms out in the country so they wouldn't bother any of the normal white people. She explained all of this in a lecture to the Ku Klux Klan. In 1921, Miss Sanger formed the American Birth Control League, and in 1942, they changed their name to Planned Parenthood. Following in the footsteps of their founder, they set up shop in the poorest, most desperate neighborhoods across the country where they performed upwards of 300,000 abortions each year. You know, it's actually kind of funny when you think of Planned Parenthood and the rhetoric about reducing abortions, although their entire revenue stream in large part is from abortions. So it's kind of like Philip Morris saying, you know what, we really want to teach teens not to smoke. No, because your product is a cigarette. Do you want to sell the cigarette? If they really believed that abortion was good for women, if they really thought that there was no profit motive, abortion would be free. People are concerned about their bottom line, and if that's where the money comes in. There's billions of dollars at stake. They're making billions of dollars doing this. Somebody somewhere has to cough up cash. They want more money. They want more of our taxpayer dollars. They want to encourage as many abortions as possible. Abortion is a dirty business. It's just a dirty business. It's birth control after the fact. Eventually someone's had to sound the alarm. You have violated my civil right. Violations. Dilation and evacuation. Family annihilation. They want the money. Abortion. 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 Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood. Welcome back to the broadcast, everyone. Music by John Elefante today. New CD coming out May 7th. Uh, John, tell us a little bit, kind of the of the overview of the CD. It's a, uh, it's a, it's great. I mean, a great, Thank great, you. great, great, great record. It's um, a, a, the theme of the record is is um, well, first of all, I mean, it's it's, I really wanted a strong record spiritually. I feel like I'm at a point in my life where you know, it's like the older you get, it's like the more you want to do something that really counts. Sure. And I, I really feel like this is an important record, but uh, thematically, what runs through this record a lot are innocent days gone by. Mm. I mean, this world has never been has never been perfect, but I remember back when I was a kid, things were just more innocent. Innocent people yeah. would blush, people would get embarrassed over things that we now think nothing of. Right, and you know, so much of that innocence is now gone. And in fact, the song that was playing during the bumper there, where have the old days gone? You know, um, where have they gone? Yeah, uh, I mean, we're in a different place. We definitely are. And you see that when the President of the United States says the words, God bless America and God bless Planned Parenthood. Folks, I'm going to play for you again this bite from Ann Pontero, and I'm going to ask you to take direct action, and we'll take your phone calls. This is the Assistant District Attorney from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I want you to listen to what she says. 
and then we're going to take some action. There was one baby that when it was born, one of the workers was playing with it for several minutes before the worker did exactly what Dr. Gosnell did, snipped the back of the neck. And when we use the word snip, it is a scissors taking a bony part of a vertebrae and cutting it. This is a very, very painful thing. And some of these babies did not die immediately. And they described their bodies twitching and lifeless. And then the President of the United States speaks to Planned Parenthood and says, God bless the United States and God bless uh, Planned Parenthood. And I like what uh, Congresswoman Diane Black said. May God forgive us. Let's go right to the phones. Delsa calling in from Maine on line three. Delsa, welcome to Jay Secchio Live. Hi, Delsa. Hi, Jay. You know, one little added thing I wanted to say was, is, you know, the, the baby is not the mother's body. The baby's completely distinct from the baby, uh, uh, from the mother. But what the- these abortionists, though, just so you know, Delsa, they draw no distinction. I said that yesterday. I've deposed these people before. I didn't, not Gosnell, but other of these abortionists. And inside the womb, outside the womb, you know, you see it in one case. You don't see it as clearly in another. There's no difference. I, I said that to somebody that called in yesterday. Uh, you know, inside the womb, three seconds before the child was outside the womb, uh, then it makes a, all of a sudden a constitutional significant difference. That's ridiculous. But go ahead. I didn't want to cut you off, but you're right. They complete disregard for human life. Yes, what I think is enormously sad is, is I come from Africa, so I'm an African-American, and it's sad that an African-American has to help our president understand that this is barbaric. It is a very sad thing that the leader of the free world doesn't understand that this is barbaric. and not. No, I appreciate what you're saying, and I'm going to go back to John Elefante on this because of the song that he's written. Uh, and again, folks, uh, you need to understand that there are consequences to this, and this was a successful consequence. His daughter, uh, his birth mother, was, you said, John, seconds away. Yes. And so when you reflect on that in your own life and in your own family unit, that here your daughter, uh, with us today, uh, listening to this broadcast, um, was seconds away from her life being ended, Mm -hmm. and you reflect on the fact that, by God's grace, that did not happen. What what does it say to you? What does it mean as, as... I know you're expressing it in the music. We're clearly hearing that. But how do you feel about it? What What's the personal aspect of it? Well, it's a, it's a tremendous blessing to uh, that I've had her 19 years and hopefully many more. But, uh, you know, what I can think about right now is all the ones that, that didn't make the decision to get off that table and go call their mother and tell her that they, they were pregnant. Um. It's uh, it's it's overwhelming to me. Well, it's, it's, let, let me tell you this. You said something just then. I'm going to play for people. This is one of Gosnell's patients, and uh, she decided she didn't want to have the abortion, but here's what happened to her, unfortunately. Number nine. When they put the heart monitor around me, that's when I decided I can't do this. I just can't, this is, I, I can't do it. And he's like, Oh, s- stop being a little, stop being a little, uh, a little baby, and he's pounding on my legs. Stop being a little baby. Stop being a little baby, and now I'm outnumbered because all these women come in, and I'm like tied to the bed. And next thing I knew, I was out of it. She went in for an abortion. She decided she, during it, she didn't want to go forward with it, but that was too late. Listen to number ten. And at first, when I woke up, I thought I was like, I didn't know where I was. I just knew I was really groggy, and I knew I wasn't pregnant anymore. And I was crying, and I kept saying, I want my baby, I want my baby. And they just were ignoring me. You know, if I played her entire testimony, John, actually, it it follows eerily close to what uh, your song, the, the lyrics you wrote in the song. So I think this is a pretty, unfortunately, a pretty common situation where the second thoughts are taking place and these abortionists are just, you know, their whole team is committed on one thing, and that is to end the life. It seems like they, they have uh, pat answers to come back with to yeah. make it go forward. No matter what. Yeah. And Jordan, that's because at the end of the day, and you've said it a lot on this broadcast, that is their industry. We think of this as it's some women's rights issue that this is all about to women's groups. So this is a billion dollar a year industry. Just in the United States. I mean, this is a, a money maker, And these are what, who you hear from here, just like many interest groups and corporate lobbyists, 
are these are their representatives of the business. But the, the reason why is they want to protect their business. So they'll give out millions of dollars to politicians to protect their revenue sources. And that's why they don't like these new regulations uh, states like Virginia have imposed, which where they have to meet some medical facility standards. I mean, we're not talking full hospital standards here. We're talking basic being clean. And there's abortion clinics who are shutting down. Why is that? It affects their profit margin. It's no longer profitable. So this is not some uh, charity work that they're doing, in their opinion. This is about profit. Well, I think that the reality is it's profit. It's an industry. It is uh, the president of the United States got saying, thank you, Planned Parenthood. God bless you and God bless America. And the reality is uh, I think the country suffers because of this. And uh, that's just the way I feel, folks. And you know that we've been committed to life. Let's grab one more call in here before the end of the broadcast. Yeah, let's go to Renee in New York, line one. Renee, welcome to JSEC Yo Live. Hi, Renee. Hi, thank you so much for sure. all you do, and praise God for your work and Jordan and your staff. Thank you. Um, I've been a longtime listener and supporter. Thank you very much. And when I listen to your program about the um, pro-life, I always think back about Michael Vick and how America was in an uproar over what he did. With the dog incident, to right. To the dogs. And then I think, the Lord has just put on my heart such a love for babies, and they don't care about babies. It's there, there's a, Renee, it's a complete abortion distortion. It distorts, their commitment to abortion distorts their view of everything. And we're naive if we don't understand it. And we're not naive. We do understand it. And you certainly did, Renee. We appreciate you calling. We're out of time. Uh, it's been a great program. Thank John. Thanks for being with us. Oh, we appreciate it. So we much. appreciate your music. If you go to the Facebook of the ACLJ or uh, my Facebook, there'll be a link right over to johnelfonte.com. Uh, you can also go there yourself, John Elefante, E-L-E-F-A-N-T-E.com. The new CD is called On My Way to the Sun. We played some of that music today, and I, we certainly have enjoyed it. And I think it speaks for a lot of us here, John, and saying thank you for putting what we do into music because that's what it's done. You're very welcome. And, folks, we want to encourage you to get that CD, so go over and visit his website. Check it out. I'm sure it's going to be available. I know it will be on iTunes soon. Again, if you want to sign on to our petition to stop the funding of the group that President Obama wants to bless, have God bless, that's Planned Parenthood, go to aclj.org or 1-877-989-2255. That's aclj.org or 877 877- 989-2255. We'll listen to John Alfonte's song this time on the way out. This time. What's unfolding in a Philadelphia courtroom is horrific. Graphic testimony about the abhorrent procedures performed by abortionist Kermit Gosnell, dismembering children after they are born. But here's the truth. Planned Parenthood has argued in the Florida legislature for the right to do exactly what Gosnell did, kill a child after it is born if the mother and doctor agree. And now we discover the Planned Parenthood knew about Gosnell's horrifying clinic where women died and baby after baby was killed after they were born. They knew and they did nothing, leaving it up to Gosnell's victims to come forward. There's no excuse for this atrocity, and there's no excuse for the fact that Planned Parenthood gets almost half of its budget from the American taxpayer. The ACLJ is battling back, challenging the abortion giant in court and working aggressively on Capitol Hill and in state legislatures to defund them. Add your name by calling 1-877-989-2255 or online, aclj.org. 